And just like that, Election Day is closer than ever, even happening tomorrow. My next guest shares some important do's and don'ts for voters heading to the polls. And joining us here on The Factor Uncensored tonight is Harris County Clerk, Tanisha Huspeth. You are a busy lady. We've got a lot going on here in Harris County tomorrow, big election day. So how busy are you preparing for all of this? Yeah, you said it. I'm the hardest working county clerk probably in the state of Texas right now, being the largest county. Uh, we are working right now to make sure that we're ready to go first thing tomorrow morning that our polls are open voters are ready to vote and qualify throughout the day so far a total of over 244,000 voters have voted in person early with about 14,000 or so mail ballots but for 2.55 million registered we still have a lot of voters out there that haven't voted in this election so here's what you need to know tomorrow is election day polls are open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m there's 701 vote centers, and you can vote absolutely anywhere, right? At Good any right. one of those 701. It could be near where you go to school, where you work, uh, where you go pick up the kids, where you go grocery shop. It can be anywhere, just as early voting. And so the best place to go to is harrisvotes.com. You can go and look at your specific sample ballot so you'll know what to expect when you get in the voting booth. So harrisvotes.com or our hotline, which is 713-75 five six nine six five voting this is the last chance to vote in the november 7th election so 7 a.m to 7 p.m 701 locations you can vote anywhere i can't express anywhere enough because there's rumors out there that you can't but you can vote anywhere you can also go to harris votes and look at our wait times the green yellow or red green means go yellow means there might be a little traffic red means there's probably a line so get her done you have all day to get it done if you wait till five or six o'clock more than likely is going to be a line that's just the reality people love to do it at the end of the day um, and we will process every single voter that's in line by 7 p.m here's another Another really good fact, Isaiah, and that is on this ballot, there are 14 state constitutional amendments, a Harris County wide bond and propositions, but most of all, it is an open mayoral seat for the city of Houston, city mm -hmm. council members at large, and city council members. So here's the deal. Know where you're registered to vote. You might have a Houston address but you may not be within the city of Houston city limits. And some voters don't learn that until they go into the booth. So go to harrisvotes.com, look at your ballot. You might be an unincorporated Houston Harris County uh, to vote on the mayor. So don't, don't necessarily get mad. Just check your voter registration and make sure you're within the city of Houston city limits. Some of the races have multiple candidates and there's a, a, there's a button on the vote machine that literally says for more candidates, see it. It won't let you go to the next contest mm -hmm. without seeing all the folks in that race. So I think I put it all out there and filled it all in. Uh, but we are available if any voters have questions, concerns, complaints, 713-755-6965. And I want to see the rest of those registered voters out to vote tomorrow. Yeah, we've got a lot of people we got to get out to vote. Now, really quick, what are some of the tools or paperwork you need to bring with you when you're voting? Absolutely. So I mentioned earlier, you can bring your sample ballot. That's definitely one of the things you can do. You can bring any written materials. It could be the League of Women Voters Guide, as long as it's written materials. Unfortunately, law does not provide that you can use your cell phone or an electronic device to look at your notes before voting. So please know before you go. Here are the IDs that you need to have before going to vote. So that's a Texas driver's license, a Texas handgun license, United States military ID, United state citizenship um, certificate, United States passport, or Texas election card ID. Um, if you don't have one of those seven IDs, then you can use a reasonable impediment form, which will allow you to use your voter certificate, a utility bill, or some other document that has your name on it. Now, we've also heard about dressing, how you dress at the polls when you go to vote. Some people wear their candidate shirts. So what would be your advice on how to dress when you go to the polls? Yes. Um, so again, uh, wearing candidates for or against or, hey, you know, you know you're, you're supporting someone. We know voters are super excited about that, but you can't do what is called electioneering within 100 foot of the poll. That's electioneering with 100 foot of the poll. So if you have a button, a 
T-shirt where you're supporting a candidate or a measure or something of that nature, you will ask to cover it up with a jacket or kind of turn it inside out while you're voting. Um, you can utilize your push card. So there are many candidates who will be given uh, documentation and information at the poll saying, hey, vote for me. As long as it's written materials, those can go inside the poll. Now, you can't pass it around and talk about it and advocate for why you think someone else should vote that way, but that's a really good question. These are all things know before you go. Remember, you can't use that cell phone or electronic devices. You can use written materials, uh, but if you have any campaign things, you know, just remove it, cover it up with a jacket, and then when you go back out, you can go and promote it as much as you want to.